As fascinating as paleontology is, there's a somber truth to this field of science. The fact that whenever studying the history of life, you're actually observing the remains of an individual in the moment of their death. And although these old bones can be our window to what life was like long ago, oftentimes the story being told is one of tragedy. And sometimes it can come with warnings of factors that could pose a real threat to us today. I had to go a bit on my way for this one driving five hours across Nebraska from the Trailside Museum. But it was definitely worth it because I eventually made it to the Ashfall Fossil Beds Museum and Geologic Park. And this is a site that I've always wanted to see, giving a snapshot of life in the Miocene 12 million years ago. The preservation and completeness of this site specimens is one of a kind for fossil sites of this age. And I am thrilled to be able to take you on a little tour of the Rhino Barn. The first hint of this discovery was made when Dr. Michael Voorhees, a paleontologist from the University of Nebraska, spotted an animal skull eroding out of a gully in 1971. He and his wife reported back to the university with what they found. Little did he know that he just stumbled upon the type of discovery that many in this field would only dream of, and the one that would come to define his career. Originally called the Poison Ivy Quarry, this site would eventually become one of the most impressive snapshots shots into North American Miocene wildlife ever found. Over the course of the next three decades, Dr. Voorhees and his team would uncover an absolutely amazing collection of fossils dating back to around 12 million years ago. And unlike most other fossil deposits, which normally consist of remains accumulated over a long period of time, it is believed that this site was formed with animals who had died over a couple of weeks at the most. Because of this, along with the remarkable preservation of the fossils, the team concluded that these animals must have died because of some sort of natural disaster and were all quickly buried before scavengers could do much damage. And as the team kept digging, they realized the actual scale of this bone bed. 18 different species of vertebrates from the Miocene were recovered. Many species, like Pliohippus and Neohyperion, actually having multiple individuals who died here. But the most astounding was the number of a species of rhino that was found here. The barrel-bodied rhino called Teleoceros major. This was by a wide margin the most common animal at the site with over a hundred individuals found. And they also found the biggest clue to what happened here 12 million years ago, in the rocks these animals were buried in, because these rocks were made of volcanic ash. By the early 90s, this site would become a state historical park, and because even 50 years later, the site continues to yield more remains, yes, they're still not done digging, a building has been constructed to allow visitors to come and observe the paleontologists carrying out the excavation and on new discoveries. A building that has come to be known as the Hubbard Rhino Barn. The explanation of what happened to these animals at first seems a little peculiar for a place like Nebraska. This mass die-off was caused by a volcanic eruption one that took place all the way in Idaho. Although neither state is known for its volcanism today, 12 million years ago, the Yellowstone caldera was under Idaho. On a quick side note, no, the volcano didn't move from Idaho to Wyoming. The volcano has always been in the same place ever since it formed. And as the continent moved across the area where the volcano was, every few hundred thousand years, it would erupt in spectacular fashion. And there's a good reason why this is called a supervolcano. When it went off 12 million years ago, it blasted ash as far away as the Atlantic Ocean. So this watering hole in Nebraska was just unfortunately in the line of fire when this giant roared their life on that fateful day. And as a result, the entire area was blanketed in 12 inches of ash. As I said before, it's not just the sheer number of specimens found here at Ashfall, which makes it so impressive, but the preservation of the skeletons is absolutely remarkable. By far the most common animal found here is Teleoceros, the barrel-bodied rhino. And because of the level of preservation, 
these fossils have given us a good understanding of many things about this animal that we would normally only be able to guess at. Because of this site, we know that these rhinos were grass eaters who lived in small herds and congregated around bodies of water. The females were smaller than the males, and the males had a pair of lower tusks that were elongated compared to the females. And because of the abundance of calves at the site that were all around the same age, and we know this because they're all around the same size, same level of development, and same amount of baby teeth, we're able to conclude that these animals probably went through a mating and calving season. Now despite how exquisitely preserved these fossils are, Keratin horns don't fossilize, but we are able to guess that Teleoceros had a small horn from looking at the skulls. But as the research continues, there's still more that can be learned from this treasure trove of Miocene fossils. Which is why, even after 50 years, the team from Nebraska University have continued to conduct research here at the Rhino Barn. There's still so much left to learn. For instance, why are carnivores in such short supply? Normally, in a situation where there's a great abundance of dead herbivores laying around, you would normally see that carnivores had been attracted to it. So far, the only ones that we have are two different species of small fox-sized canids. And there have been teeth marks found on some of the rhino bones that are believed to have belonged to a larger species of dog called Epicyon, but this is yet to be confirmed. We know that there were large carnivores in the area, like bone-crushing dogs and barbarophilids, but their remains have just not turned up yet. So every year, Paleontologists and graduate students from the University of Nebraska continue to probe through the layers of 12 million year old ash. Some estimates conclude that the sun may have been blotted out for up to a year, and for a long time life did not return to the region. But this was not an extinction causing event, and the evidence as you get closer to the surface indicates that rhinos and other animals did eventually return. The animals of Miocene Nebraska lived on, and the rhinos would remain on the continent until somewhere around four to five million years ago. It's unknown what caused the rhinos to die out in North America, but it's believed that a cooling, drying climate may have played a part. But over the millennia, the rhinos at Ashfall have been left as a reminder of Mother Nature's fury, as well as a time capsule to a time long forgotten. Yellowstone is still very much a living supervolcano, and some calculations estimate that it is due to erupt again sometime within the next 30,000 years. If that were to happen today, it would obviously not be a good day in the Holocene. And perhaps millions of years later, amazing fossil beds would likely turn up showing all the different creatures who died when the great American supervolcano blew its top again. And if that makes you feel any better, give this video a like. I also want to remind everyone that obviously I can't cover everything there is to see in this or any other museum that I tour. I encourage anyone who is ever a reasonable distance away to go check these places out for yourself. I started this series both to educate as well as raise awareness and interest in these sites so more people can enjoy these wonders of our world. So don't just live vicariously through me. Go have your own museum adventures. And I mean, still watch and like the video, but you know, then once you've seen the video, go check it out for yourself. If this is your first time here and you enjoy my type of paleontology content, I would love it if you subscribe. And also, if you want to see even more from me, you should consider following me on Instagram. I post there every single day about different prehistoric creatures as well as ask questions of my followers and take polls of their responses. I ironically have like twice as many followers on Instagram as I do subscribers on YouTube. So we have quite a little community over there. But anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed our little tour of Ashfall and I can't wait to go on our next adventure together. See you all next week.